Commodore VIC-20. This machine was donated to the channel recently and as we found out in that unboxing video there is an issue with this. The colours are all garbled on screen and when we tried to run a game the graphics were just a mess. At the time we did swap out the VIC chip to see if it made any difference but no the fault still persisted. Obviously something else wrong on that board so let's see if we can't fix it. But before we do anything, let's just remind ourselves exactly what the issue is. This VIC-20, by the way, this is an earlier model. And we know that because of the type of power brick it uses. Just a 9 volt AC transformer. It just has this 2 pin end on it. So we have the long board in here. The later VIC-20s, like the other system I have, has a shorter cost reduced board. And it uses the same type of power brick as the Commodore 64. So if we just power this on. You can see straight away we have some issue with the colour of the text. It should all be black but there is some of it coloured. And in fact there's another issue isn't there? The second character of 3583 bytes free is missing. The 5 is missing. And then if we stick a game in, fourth encounter, and if we try that, you can see even more corruption now. We're missing quite a bit of text and those colours are all over the place. Sound works. So obviously something wrong in here. I'm going to take it apart. We'll pull the motherboard out and have a think about what might be causing this problem. Well, there's our board out. And other than being a little bit dusty, it does look in very good condition. On the underside, no signs of any reworking in the past, so it's not like anyone else has been in here tinkering. We do have a problem to solve though, and we know it's not the 6561, that's the PAL version of the VIC, and 6560 is the NTSC version. But what could it be? What is screwing up our display? Well, I found a little guide on the interwebs as you can see here and if we scroll down through this UC2 74LS04 logic if this is faulty characteristics would be screen character colors incorrect scrambled if very bad entire screen becomes garbled with flashing characters vertical bars and random colors well, our character colours are certainly incorrect. The graphics are a bit scrambled and we're getting random colours. So I think this is going to be a good place to start. So I'm just going to hook up the Logic Probe. We'll take ground off that capacitor and 5 volts off this one. Making sure not to short anything. And let's have a look around UC2. So it should be 5 volts up there. Yep, and ground down here. Seems to be. Straight away, that does not look right, sure doesn't. Stuck high is trying to pulse, but seemingly stuck. And the next pin is the opposite. That looks alright. As does that, and that. There's a pin stuck low. Nothing happening there. Another one low, and nothing happening. So pins one and two have very little activity, if any. And then pins 10, 11, 12, and 13 all look a bit screwed up as well. Before we just jump in and replace that chip though, let's have a quick look at this schematic 
to see were pins 1 and 2 and 10 through, what did I say it was? 10, 11, 12, 13, 10 through 13 were they connected to. So we can just look on zimmers.net, very popular website, holds a lot of schematics for various computers. I have used this quite a bit in the past for the C64. Now, the VIC-20 though. My actual revision of VIC-20 is a 324002. That isn't listed here, but I'm sure the 001 won't be that much different. But it's just a matter of looking through this and finding UC2. There's part of it, pins 3 and 4, but we know there are no issues on pins 3 and 4. Where's pins 1, 2 and 10 through 13? Well, I have been over this and over this and over this again. There's UC2 pins 5 and 6, but we know those are working okay, or seem to be anyway. 8 and 9. But again, that seems to be working okay. 10 through 13. It isn't on here. And it is very possible that those pins on that chip just aren't used. But we'll know better when we get the chip off. Pins 1 and 2 though, I found them. We do know we have an issue here. And look. What signal they are driving? Color. And it's the color we're having a problem with. Question is though, will it be a fault in UC2? Or will it be a fault in UC6? Which is 74LS138. It is that which is generating the color signal. UC2 itself. 74LS04, well that's just a hex inverter, so that's just taking a logic high and spitting out a logic low. Now it is possible there's a fault within that chip which is affecting the signal coming into it as well as the signal going out. But I can't help but wonder, is our fault maybe back in this chip, UC6? There's UC6 there. The 74LS138. Thing is, I don't have any of those. And I can't think of any other machine to try and pull one out of. So let's hope that the problem is with this chip. The 74LS04 UC2. I have plenty of those. There's one replacement right there. Let's get that out. Get that in and uh, hope that that fixes it. So just looking at these holes, there doesn't appear to be any connectivity to pins 10 through 13. Certainly not on that side of the board. And I don't see any traces running to them on this side either. So it's only pins 1 and 2 that we're really worried about. And since we have that off, let's just fit a socket. A little bit of blue tack will hold it in place. Then we can flip the board over and solder it up. New chip in, let's test it. Right, power and video are connected. Logic probe is hooked up, ready to go. Is this gonna fix it? No. Albeit, I think it is better, but we still have some colors that are off. We're not missing any characters though. Let's have a quick look with the probe, pin one, yeah, that's still not right. Yep. Signal coming into this chip is not right. That's being generated over here. I think it always was wishful thinking, wasn't it? That it was going to be the hex inverter at fault. 
I think the problem lies in this. Where am I going to find a replacement one of those? Well, other than ordering replacements. What about in here? Our other VIC-20 or VC-20 as it's badged here. This has the other motherboard on it, the short board. But has it got any 74LS138s? Yes, it does. And they're in sockets. You know what that tells me? That tells me that these fail. There's three of them there. All three of them are socketed. So we could pull them out of there easily enough. And even just try it in there. In fact, now that I'm looking, there's three of those chips in the other system and there's three of them in here as well. I'm half tempted, you know, to pull all three of those fit sockets and even try swapping them about, first of all, just to see if it makes any difference. Because if that one's failed or if it has problems, I can't help but wonder if those two maybe have problems as well. I think we'll just start with this one though. Let's just pull it out, fit a socket, and then we'll test using one of the chips out of that other machine. This was meant to be simple. This was meant to be swap out a couple of components, fix the video signal, one working VIC-20. Nothing is ever that simple though, is it? So replaced this chip here, didn't make any difference. Then got curious and you'll notice the other two 74LS138s are now in sockets as well. Because pulled them out of the board and started swapping them about randomly just to see if it made any difference between them. And no, it didn't do anything. So back to the schematics. And that colour signal generated from UC6 through UC2 makes its way through to UE8, which is this component here. So you'll notice that's in a socket because I tried to swap that out as well, just on the off chance that it was faulty. A 74LS245N. Nope, no problem there. That didn't fix it either. So let's have a think about this. What is going on here? Why is this not working? Let's follow this color signal. So it's coming into pin 7 of our 245, which is a bus transceiver, and that's effectively getting swapped with pin 13. So where does that go? It disappears out here. C E U B is that? Not sure. But that seems to be it there as well. Through our UC2 again. And that is the chip select of memory module UE1. That's this fella down here. Now I think I'm right in saying that. The VIC-20 stores all its colour information on one 1K RAM chip, so it must be that. These chips are 4 bits, so if we look at that schematic again, that's presumably them there, D0 through D3, and those are coming out onto VD8, 9, 10 and 11. Interestingly, and if we take a look at the 6561 itself, there's VD8, 9, 10, 11 there, pins 5 through 8. Those are the lines of the special colour data bus. So could it be this memory module that is faulty? Or could it be something else connected to this? Possibly UD1, 4066. And I thought this was interesting because I was given another copy of this guide. This is slightly different, this copy, because here under UD1, it also suggests that if that's faulty, we might have issues with screen characters have incorrect colors. That is certainly what we are seeing. So is the fault 
in here or in here. I think what I'll do is just pull both of these. I will have to desolder them off the other VIC-20 as well. I don't have spare parts for these, just sitting handy. I can always order whatever it is that turns out to be faulty. Fingers crossed, of course, that it is one of these that turns out to be faulty. Let's pull both of them off, take them off the other board as well, stick them in here, and hopefully that fixes it. Okay, so two new sockets fitted here now, and that is the original chips back in there. Just want to test that we're still getting the same fault. Wouldn't it be funny if it just turned out to be a dry solder joint or something under one of them? Nope, still getting that same problem. So, which one will we swap out first? Let's go for the RAM. Spur RAM chip that I pulled off the other VIC-20. Is that going to fix it? No. So, it's not that. Is it going to be this? The 4066. Please. Because if it's not this, I really don't know what else could be causing the problem. So that's the 4066 out of the other VIC-20 as well. Come on. Oh yes, it's fixed. That's what it's meant to look like. This board is actually producing a sharper image over composite than the other short board VIC-20 that I have. That is definitely a better image. Let's swap back to the original RAM chip just to see. And that's just to confirm that the fault was isolated to that 4066. Yep, it's still working. That was the problem all along. Wasn't UC2, wasn't UC6, wasn't UE8, wasn't that memory. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame I didn't find that other VIC-20 diagnostic guide until so late on in this process because it suggested it might be UD1 and that's exactly what it turned out to be. Well there we are that's the Commodore VIC-20 sorted. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. We fixed the issue with the colours. Currently running the game fourth encounter here. We did try to run this earlier and if you remember it was a bit of a mess. That's the way it's meant to look. The Wii system itself cleaned up really well. Just give it a quick going over just with a damp cloth and it came up almost like new. Hardly any signs of yellowing on this so I am more than happy just to leave this one alone. I don't think we need to get the retro brightening out. And it was just that single chip wasn't it? The 4066. It had obviously failed. Now I did have to borrow it out of this VIC-20 but I have ordered some. It should be here in a couple of days. I'll drop the new one in here and it will get this machine up and running again also. But for now that is it. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this wee video and if you did I would appreciate a thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG and I'll see you next time.